Welcome, my name is Matt, this is Hidden Light, and today we're going to talk about the film that I shot on our recent Durango, Silverton, Colorado fall color trip. Uh, I brought a bunch of 8x10 film with me, which was black and white, and I felt like I was going to want to like scout and play a little bit more than that. So I also brought a Nikon F5, and I brought a bunch of 35mm film to just sort of play like 8x10 to play with an 8x10 you really gotta like dedicate some time so I knew kind of some of the shots that I wanted to get with the big camera and I played around with the little camera it's good to have both options so I think what we'll do is we'll just start here these are my 8x10 negatives and we'll just go through them on the old light table here so um this is what it looks like in negative which is probably not very helpful to you I think what we'll try and do is just do it as a positive. So, thanks to the magic of editing, we can play that game. This is the first morning that we were up for like doing our sunrise thing. My exposure looks pretty reasonable. I have no idea how this is gonna print in platinum. I mean, probably mostly fine. It's kind of low contrast, even though I'm using a reasonably punchy orthochromatic film. <sighs> we'll see, we'll see. But I like, there's like kind of a shape down here, and there's some pretty trees that are various tones, shades, colors here. I uh, don't love this rock, but what do you do? This schmutz is going to be in all of them because it's on the light table. So don't worry about that. Just pretend it's not there. Uh, sweet. I don't know. Kind of a neat one. It's very, I don't know. We were talking about kitsch while we were out there and how... Sometimes you get kitschy photographs because there's like a cabin in a field in the mountains. I didn't hurt me none. I ain't got no problem with kitsch. Uh, here's the lake from the second morning. I like bodies of water in my photographs. I like playing in lakes. I like being around lakes. I like the serenity that you get from being around water. Uh, I don't know. It's pretty. Yeah. That's like, I don't even have words to say about it. It's just, I'm curious to see what it looks like in print. I've come to the realization that for a lot of my 8x10 work, you know, I've been doing this thing all year where I shoot 8x10 and I contact print to platinum and I get what I get, right? Which is kind of fun. We've got a whole series of videos that I've done that with. We're going to print these as well, or at least some of them, the good ones. Ugh. Scanning these and being able to manipulate them in Photoshop and then make prints of them is going to be is going to result in very different prints that'll give me a lot more control, and I'm going to do that like at the end of this year or the beginning of next year when I've like taken a break from eight by ten. You know, I'm going to allow myself to then scan and manipulate these properly. So I'm curious to see what that looks like. Here's a similar shot to the first shot, a little more foggy, cloudy, shenanigans. Um, i am got a different composition here, so I'm kind of like lower, kind of like behind like this. There's like a little hill here that you kind of can't see. It hides some of this first structure and some of the fence out here. I think I like this composition more than the first one, where you see like more building, more fence, more whatever. I feel like this is... A better composition as far as exposure goes eh, close i like that we go out of focus here because i've got a little bit of tilt in and we're focused more out here i think that's whatever i really wanted the sun to rise right here with a great big boosh sun flare but i didn't get that <laughs> that was the story of my life on that trip same ex same composition different exposure it was like oh i want this thing over here and then it didn't happen for like every shot that I set up, which that's what I get. You know, Taylor and I were having a discussion the other day, like quit having such preconceived notions, man. Shoot what's there, not what you want to be there. Shit. Ooh, look at these. You guys remember that trip that I did to Grand Falls? Cool. Uh, granted, not the water that I wanted not the sun flare again that I wanted. Like I've, I've got all these sun flares that I want and I don't get them. But 
honestly, like the amount of tilt that I have, the length of the exposure that I have, not bad. If I go back and do this exact same shot at sunrise with a thermonuclear amount of water going through this, it's going to look fucking cool. Uh! Same shot again, uh, but slightly different. I don't remember what I did different for these. I'd have to go, I'd have to go back and watch the footage because I don't take notes because most of the time I'm shooting the eight by 10, I'm also doing video in some capacity, either me or Alex. So uh, I'm sure I did something different. It still looks good. My head in that shot, hello. Um, yeah, I like that. I like the theory here. Execution, five out of 10. Ooh, shit, vertical. Well, you can just pretend you see what this looks like as a horizontal. <laughs> um, see that horizon line that kind of goes cattywampus like that? There are on the ground glass lines, like every two centimeters showing level. There's a level on the camera. There's two actually, there's one on each standard. And I somehow still managed to do this. So what I'll end up doing is crop, crop, straighten it out. Pretend like it was not shot by a idiot Neanderthal. Hold that thought. Anyway. Uh, yeah, long exposure. You can see the water's moving, but the trees aren't. Uh, it has potential. We'll see. Whoa, another vertical. Sorry, that was weird. Uh, better horizon this time. Again, got the water doing the thing that I wanted the water to do. Got this cute little bridge. Got this really stupid thing here that I would Photoshop out if I had Photoshop. But I don't because it's the year 1880. Uh, I'm excited about this one too. Like all of these are compositions that are really simple. They're mostly reasonably clean. They're just, they're just pretty. Like I'm not making a fucking statement with these, you know? They just look good. Have I said fuck enough in this video? Fuck. That was a travesty. This is probably the first shot from that morning that was not quite long enough to really get me the density that I need because the earlier you start, the less light there is, whatever. So that's why I spread out the same composition over three shots. Uh, it's reasonably thin. It's probably still printable. There's just the barest edge of detail in some of these really deep, dark trees. So we'll see. We'll see. Maybe. Uh, so that was the eight by 10. I also shot <laughs> a number of rolls of 35. So let's just look at those real quick. Um, I'm not gonna show you the negatives because I've already scanned them and inverted them and we can actually look at the raw take on my computer. So we'll do that. So this, when you get your film processed by us, is the first shot you'll see on every roll. It's your twin check number. Ugh. Beautiful. Uh-oh. Which way am I doing? Am I doing this up and down? I'm too dumb to work this program, you guys. I also have like 300 frames loaded into this program right now. So, okay, so I should be able to go up and down. So we are in a bar here. I'm shooting black and white. This is probably HP5 that I've pushed at least one stop. More likely two because it's dark as hell in here. So we'll just kind of wander through these. I was kind of like vibing this whole bar like in a pretty serious way. Like this one as a platinum, little lower contrast. I like hanging up in your bar at home, you know? I'm kind of playing around with different compositions here. You can see me sketch as I go. Like the first frame, Maybe the composition wasn't quite as tight as I liked. And so then you go a couple frames later and things are starting to like get a little bit more put together like it's on purpose. And then, so the exact same shot just focused towards the back. Um, I'd probably crop this one in, you know, starting here, like crop into here, over here, because I like this little shenanigans and this shenanigans, obviously. It's a cool looking bar, you know? Like this table we had our drinks set on was like a piano or something weird, like the guts of a piano. I don't know. 
Just fancy cocktails. Thanks, shout out to Todd, who, Todd Macon, who took us to the bar and was generally our homie while we were hanging around. Um, I'm just like buzzing through these. Look at this. Like, put your cocktail in the ice so it doesn't get, man, man, that's fancy. This is me trying to shoot down on that table, which is like piano, whatever. I like this one, actually. The grain on this turned out almost exactly the way that I wanted. I've got good contrast. These are snappy. We'll just we'll just buzz through these. Yeah, get it. We're at a bar. That one's less good. The meter on the F5 is damn good. Look how look how fucking creepy this guy is over here. I, I spent a fair amount of time photographing him without trying to look like I was photographing him. But he's like, he's got this like mad men, freaky, I'm going to break your fucking knees thing going on over here. He's intense. Anyway, this guy's creepy as hell and I kind of liked it. And then back to drinks. We're gonna, we're just, we're just gonna cruise through this. A couple of uh, older ladies hanging out, having some drinks. Okay, next roll. Oh my gracious, that right there is why I went on this trip. Look at it. I got my kitschy little cabin with my little driveway and my fall color in the snow with film grain. Oh yes, I do. Uh, this is an experimental roll showing Fuji with and without a filter. That's going to be a separate video. So we're just going to nuke through these and ignore the fact that there's filter and filter and not filter and filter. Uh, separate video. Link below or something. Anyway. Love this. Like, okay, I'm not a canvas prank guy, but... Get a couple of these, print them on a nice big 24 by 36 canvas, hang it up on your wall. Mm. Mm. Maybe not this one. It's too much ground. It's boring. Nice snow. We get it. Nobody cares. Oh, is this me doing a panorama? No. Still. Oh, look at that cutie. Oh, look how cute she is. This is what happens when I have a 35 millimeter camera. I love this one. Oh, come on. Come on. That is gorgeous. Colorado, you nice. You fancy. You got the trees, you got the other trees, you got the clouds, you got the snow. Like, damn. Got a cute girl in a car. Got some trees. I don't know what I, I mean, I know what I was chasing here is like the difference of the trees, but the, it didn't really work out the way I was hoping. That one's close. It's okay. It's fine. Getting separation here was, was tough. It just, I couldn't pull off what I was looking for. That didn't stop me from trying for like 10 minutes. I like that one too. This is an interesting color of the water to be, but it really is like this color down here. It's kind of like brown and muddy and sulfur looking. Trees in the clouds. Cute girl. Again. I keep calling her a cute girl. It's, it's my wife, you know? I mean, shit. I know she's a grown-ass adult woman, but... Oh. Okay. Execution, 3 out of 10, but <laughs> the feeling of a shot like this, like maybe even I, I crop it a little higher and call it a panorama. Maybe I crop it like here and, or here and call it a vertical and use it as like an iPhone background. I love this. Love it. And maybe I'm the only one and that's okay. Look at this. Oh my gracious. I love that. That's my kind of shot. Worth it. Worth the price of admission. Uh, beautiful blurry shot. Okay. Being less of a spaz. This is again filter testing, but uh, you know, there's a little bit of the stand of Aspen up there. It's kind of cool looking. Still don't know how to work a horizon line clearly. Got a little fish jumping in this lake. That's not a lake, that's a lake right there. Kind of a moment, you know? There's Todd, 
two camera Todd we call him. How often do you get to like look through a photographer's entire take from a shoot? This is what we're doing. These are like ever so slightly edited, but very little. I'm just like running through the, the roll. You can see what I'm trying to do here, failing miserably. A little bit better without the parking lot, but still looks like shit. Yep, tra tragic trash. Okay, that's kind of cute. Like, yeah, water drops, whatever. Maybe crop out like... Oh, fuck, made it angry. Well, you know what I was... Come on. You know, like something like that. Might be kind of cute. That was epic failure. Yeah, okay, I get it. Nice tree. Wind's kicking up a little bit, so the water's not quite as smooth and gorgeous, but you get to see the mountains, so there's that. We waited around for ages to be able to see this mountain, and Todd knows what it's called, and I don't. I wasn't paying attention, but I don't know. Good background. Me photographing Todd, photographing the mountain, photographing Kristen, photographing the mountain. <sighs> Oh, I love this one. I really wish this car didn't exist, but both of these are super cute. I love that. That one's for me. Sorry, these are TIFFs and the computer's struggling, so. Digital camera. Shh. Don't tell anyone she's using a digital. I use digital sometimes too. Okay, now we're back in a bar somewhere. Black and white, HP5, pushed at least one stop. This is a cool little bar. I wanna do like a rent the whole bar out and have a proper photo meetup and get some proper models and stuff in here. Cause like, uh, it's cool. It's a, it's a cool spot. And they've got drinks. Delicious. I like this one too. I like taking pictures of my wife. Leave me alone. <laughs> That's fine art. Actually though, like without the big dumb truck in here, this, this feels very kind of like, you know, it's too loud oh, horn, but it feels a little like Ruth Bernard or something. Definitely, uh, definitely art. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> uh, oh, God. The wallpaper in this place and the ceilings. I mean, look at that. Come on. How often are you in a bar that looks like this? If you don't live in LA. That's what the servers look like. She's a homie. I forget her name, but she was great. Got a live pianist. Pianist. I don't know, man. Like, you can see me struggling to find compositions that I think are interesting and, by and large, failing, but at least showing what the place is like. This is super early morning at this location. This is kind of what it looked like. We're going to have uh, a couple rolls of skin still. At least one roll of skin still. It might be this roll. This might be 400D. I think it is. So without, oh yeah, it definitely is. Without like direct dramatic lighting, it behaves pretty much like you'd expect any good color film to behave. And then as soon as the lighting gets direct and you have to like, you're backlighting something or there's proper specular highlights, that's when it gets interesting. So you can see me sketching out my second composition while the 8x10 is set up somewhere else. Todd had this great composition with these flowers in here, so I was like hanging out with that, seeing what that looks like. Don't mind uh, Negative Lab Pro absolutely shitting the bed here. Oh no, this is a filter test also. That's 400D with no filter, 400D with a filter. That's what a camera that's covered up from the rain looks like. You know, 
Let's get into some of these specular highlights and see if we can find this. There was a shot here that I wanted, but I, there we go. Specular highlights in 400D. Um, thermonuclear halation. Just obscene. While the rest of the image looks mostly normal. Mostly. But as soon as you point it into the sun, that shit goes crazy. Orange AF. Uh oh, this is me doing a pano. I, d I do that sometimes. Can't fit it on the 50 millimeter lens, which is the only lens I brought. So I'm just gonna snap, 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 snap. And then stitch them together in post. Which you actually have to do before you do the Negative Lab Pro conversion so that you get a single image first, then do the Negative Lab Pro and then it does fine. Oh, like even when I'm exposing for her skin tone here, right? There's a little bit of halation, but it's mostly normal-ish. Good detail on the shadows all the way through to the highlights like cinema film should. <laughs> but then when you get, you know, stuff like this, you get a little bit more halation there and you can see there's some off in the edge. Almost there. This is gonna be a roll of superior. Just kind of cruising through. That one's not bad. Kind of cute. This is our little brewski meetup at Ska Brewing. I don't even know what I'm doing here. He's got a Hasselblad hoodie on, so you gotta photograph that with the beers. Daryl, Darrell, sorry bro, Darrell. He's a homie. There's Kristen with some Polaroids that Darrell shot. Cameras and beers. I tried to get the cameras and beers crew to come hang out and be friends, but they're like, they don't live in the middle of nowhere, Colorado. So here's another filter test. One, two. Can't even tell the difference. Pretty subtle with the Fuji, especially after Negative Lab Pro's done its thing. And amazingly, I actually got some shots inside this bar. This is probably like the better part of a half second. Not bad though. I mean, good reflection, reasonably sharp, all things considered. Considering I'm shooting, thank God for autofocus. I'm not entirely sure what's going on out here. If I have schmutz on the lens or if it's just probably schmutz. Ooh. Too bad that glass is empty. If it had been full of amber liquid, the shot would have looked a lot better, but I'd already finished that drink. <laughs> Whoops. Oh my gracious, just snapping away. And then this is us in that same bar, hanging out. I was going for the like, you know, light the face with the phone thing. Eh, kind of worked. This freaking creepy guy again. Camera's on a table. Yeah, yeah, you know. And then there's the next morning. Must have pushed this roll. Look at the grain. <laughs> Love this. So, you know, not, not like much in the way of fine art, necessarily. But I just figured it'd be cool to show off the results. You know, I don't do the thing where the, you know, like, oh, shoot the YouTube video and then like splice in the photo inside the video because that's not the way it works. Like when I'm out shooting and I'm shooting film, I don't know what it's going to look like until a week or two later by the time I finally get my film in my hands and I have time to look at it. So you, the viewer, get to join me on that same exact experience. Don't get to know what it looks like until it's done. I like these. I like this. Rain on the lake is really nice. The, the composition is shit, but yeah, you get the idea. 
black and whites look so much better than the colors here. I don't know if it's because I pushed it or it's because I didn't shoot this roll until we had actual sunlight. And so, like, I didn't have to hurt for the exposures quite so bad. I don't know. I like them. Cute. Nothing amazing, but kind of fun. Is that the last one? It is. Anyway, that was my film from the Durango whatever trip. If you haven't seen the travesty that is me attempting to vlog all on my lonesome with a little bit of help from Kristen, go watch that in the wherever it is. And uh, we can all laugh at me together. Uh, I got a bunch more videos to record today, so um, I'll get on with that, and you, uh, I don't know, enjoy your life. Subscribe if you haven't already. Come on, just do it. Do it now! <laughs> okay.